And I and ask that each of you, in whatever tradition is comfortable for you, let's just take a minute and invoke the Spirit in the in for me the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Rabba Seke Lena Mukia Kundiasa Rebebe Sekiliando Kuraba Seise Rabba Sokumbara Yasando Kuraviasa Lando Kubura Seliando Ko Poli Rebiandaha Rababa Sundo the Rabba Sekiadase Arama Sende the Yoshel Yambo Hodra Hallelujah Hallelujah Soko Babaradiasa Rebebe and the Dria Sokulianda Dadarasa Yes, in the dia so kulianda hase ke ese rabasa do rabase ke dia so kularasa. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you for tonight. I thank you for those of you that indulged me for this 60 seconds. For truly we have a wonderful creative God that we serve. An energy that is all present, almighty. Last week was so powerful with the doctor, and I know I personally walked away healed of a thyroid condition that, that almost put me to death in 2009. I just, I thank God that the doctor so clearly talked and spoke about faith that we just need to grab the wholeness of who we've been created. And I walked away with that. And I shared with Pastor John, I had a, a, a dream that I'm going to take a few seconds just to share because I don't want to take any way, time away from our precious guests that we have. But I have to share this dream because it was one of those things where I thank God that the dreams are coming back and that technology of dreaming and having information just seems to be flowing greater since this class has come together. For truly, I was 10 years old when I had my first uh, word of knowledge when I knew my little brother needed surgery. Didn't know how I knew, I just knew. And sure enough, two days later, he had uh, emergency surgery. And I've spent so many years trying to figure out what this gift is. And I just, I'm grateful for this class of getting more and more clarity. But the dream was very simple. A lamb or a sheep on an altar, alive, on fire, and a donkey or I, I didn't know if it was a donkey or a horse since that time, I, it was a donkey, laying on its side, chewing the lamb's, and actually eating the lamb's neck. And when I saw it, immediately I jumped back and said, horses are uh, carnivorous, or donkeys eat flesh? That doesn't seem right. And then I said, oh my gosh, they're eating a sacrifice. And I was troubled by it. And John posted that day, um, Jeremiah 33 and 3, if you don't know something, ask. And so it was just so powerful. And, and I continued to search and I shared it with Pastor John. And I just want to share with you that it's so simple. It's actually Romans 12, 1, if you indulge me a second. I beseech thee, brethren and sistren, of course, uh, that you present, uh, the, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And so the lamb truly was a sacrifice. It was alive. And it was on fire, being burned by the holy fire. But the donkey was eating the neck, that, that place where the thyroid is that place place where power is the place where the voice is and and i i first of all i looked up and there are horses that do and donkeys that do eat meat it's very rare but there's weird things that happen it's like okay that's not the message what is the message and then all of a sudden it dawned on me if you've ever seen the movie shrek if you have little kids there's just this annoying donkey I mean, really annoying. And he has this, this scene where he's like, pick me, pick me. And they're always telling him to be quiet because he's annoying, because he's chewing away at the holy. And for me, it was just a reminder that 
I believe by faith that I'm healing, healed, and nothing can take that away. And yet when we present our bodies as living sacrifices, in the Old Testament, the sacrifices were dead and burned. We are alive Amen. in the Most High. We have the living spirit within us and continue to grow glory to glory, faith to faith. Oh, it is so wonderful and I'm so grateful for the messages and the technologies that we have, that we have such a mighty man leading us in this. And tonight we get to hear from yet another glorious man of faith. Thank you for indulging me. I appreciate this community more than you ever know. I love each and every one of you. John, thank you. Thank you, Susan, Reverend Susan. Thank you for everything. That was really a powerful dream and experience that you had. And I just really appreciate that for sharing that because we truly are living sacrifices that should be wholly acceptable unto Yahweh. And we thank God for that. You know, I just want to welcome you all again to the Rising Mystics Masterclass. This is Mystic Monday. Yay! How many people out there are excited, are excited? I'm just so excited. I get so excited as the day's approaching, even though I'm not speaking, but I just get excited to see you guys because I know that we are all growing and we are all learning and we're experiencing him and it's very powerful what is happening within us. We've had so many wonderful testimonials, you know, since this class just first started October 29th, you know, and we dealt with the breadth of life technology and we gave you various tools and technologies to use to enhance your spirituality so that you can grow up in him in all things, so that you can encounter and interface with the supernatural. Then we dealt with like a, a quantum meditation and, uh, you know, and then quantum fasting and, and just in some of you that had not fasted before, some of you that had not fasted in decades, you said that you fasted and, and uh, several days. And there was one of the brothers that went 18 days and nights, you know, and uh, during that time. And so we were all fasting. We were learning our lunar cycles when the when the when the moon is in your zodiac sign that that's a cue for you to align with the heavens for example tonight the moon is moving into taurus and so all of you taurian people people born under the sign of taurus it is your cue to come into alignment with the heavens because uh god is doing something very awesome within you and you want to capture that moment and we're interconnected with everything that is. We are a part of everything that is. I'm a part of you. You're a part of me. It doesn't matter if you're watching this live now all across the country and out of the country, or whether you're watching it later in Asia or in Europe or in Africa or wherever you are, we are one and we are together and we are expanding our consciousness so that we can just see a, a total paradigm shift on the planet. That's what we want. That's that's what we are about. We're, we're, we're positioning ourselves with the wisdom and knowledge of the Almighty so that we can just help to bring about this paradigm shift. And where we now we see pockets of people all over the country and all over the world that's waking up. They're realizing there's more than religion. There's more than just going to church or to a synagogue or to a temple or wherever you may go or staying at home. But there is something very powerful happening. And guess what? You get to be a part of it. And it's so exciting because we are part of this. We are helping to make it happen. And you are important. Every piece that you bring, just your presence here, just gathering in consciousness here in this space in time, you are creating something very powerful in the spirit. And this energy, this anointing is building up, building up, and pretty soon it's going to explode. And it's going to just be exciting and it's going to be powerful and we're going to manifest all that we are. And that's why we do this. This is why you guys 
take aside, you know, set aside an hour, hour and a half or so on a Monday. Some of you drag in from work. Some of you come from various things, and but you're committed to being here. Some of you even, you know, are in different time zones, uh, in different places, even tune in and you're there, you're sleeping and it's okay because the word is getting within your spirit, you know? And so we just appreciate you for helping to create what is happening here and uh and as uh uh, uh dr susan was saying earlier uh that last week we had just an awesome time with dr frazier and dealing with the quantum thoughts and uh you know thinking properly and manifesting everything causing everything to collapse into our reality and uh, it is just so exciting uh of what we are experiencing and uh, i have a special guest tonight a friend of mine that I've known for some years, and he is called the Buddha of Mississippi. And he has a nice Mississippi accent. You know, I've been so blessed over the years to just meet all kinds of people from all walks of life, from all cultures, all religions and stuff, because I try to be open. You know, I believe that God, Yahweh, is all inclusive. I don't believe that he has like just picks and favorites, except for me. You know, I am one of his favorites. I have to just admit it, you know. <laughs> I see some of you raising your hands. You say you are too, but okay. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, you know, God is, is inclusive. And so you're all included. And so I've been so blessed to meet so many people over the years and just out of the blue through the website or through people that became aware of the website or through our conferences that we used to do regularly uh, around, the, uh, around the world, actually, and, and throughout the country. And so some years ago, uh, I, I got a phone call from uh, my brother, uh, Buddy. And uh, let me see, I'm trying to unmute mute him here. Uh, there he is. Yeah. Uh, and so I got a phone call. I had never uh, met him before. I'd never heard of him before. And, uh, and so he was just waking up. He was just waking up and he was so excited. And uh, this was in the early 2000s and he's still excited. And he told me this fascinating story about his journey and how he was awakened and uh, some miraculous things that was happening. And over the years, we've talked, you know, from time to time, and, and, uh, and it's just been amazing to see the transformation in his life and, uh, and what he is doing and how he just caught on to a lot of the things that, that many of us, or many of you maybe, that, that took years to get to, but when God woke him up, he just, he just went from like, Hey, there to there, you know, just right away. He was just totally gung-ho, and he still is. And I just want to bring Buddy out now, uh, Buddy Huggins from Mississippi, the Buddha from Mississippi, and I want you to just share and uh, tell us, first of all, how did, how did you uh, be, uh, became the, the Buddha of Mississippi? How did that happen? Thank you. I want to make sure the microphone's working and you can hear me good. Uh, we need you a little bit louder. A little bit louder. Yes, I can barely hear you. Do 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 that. I don't know if these microphones can turn up, so I may just have to talk up. Okay. Let me see if I can adjust it. Hang on. All right. I'm giving him a thought while he's adjusting that uh, microphone. Uh, you know, you're going to hear just some awesome things. Possibly, he's going to mention something about DNA and uh, what he did to like just transform his life and the lives of many other people. Are you ready to try it now, buddy? Yes, I think I'm gonna just have to talk up. Okay, I talk, could, just I shout could, it out. I, I, could, <laughs> I could try to change the mic to, a, to another one. Hang on just a second and I'll go. It could be that it'll work better. Hmm. All right, can you hear me now? Oh, that is much better, much, much better. better. Thank you. All right. We'll yeah. leave it like that. Isn't God good? Oh, yes, all the time. <laughs> you just open a, open a little drop-down box, and there's a little button. And even the – I noticed even the microphone actually has a, a green when you can hear, see your level. You can actually mm -hmm. tell. I love technology. But you were asking <clears throat> me a question about the awakening. When, when and how did that happen? Yeah. Well, um. I, I went to church when I was very young in a Baptist church in Greenville, Mississippi. 
I remember my grandmother always putting a quarter in my hand and telling me and my sister, you know, when they pass that thing around, just give that money to them and everything's going to be all right. Uh, I literally fell out of the church at eight years old. Um, just had a bad incident and it just didn't, something about it just wouldn't, wouldn't write for me in that town and that particular church. So I stayed out of it for a very long time, but I always had something in me that knew that the things that we were seeing and being told about what God is, wasn't real, wasn't true. I knew God was greater than what we'd ever been told. I knew the story about what we are is hidden. And the, and the truth of what this reality is, is, is it's been covered up. And now they keep us in a spell. And the way they do that is with spinning words and, and manipulating history and time. And they keep people thinking in a mentality of broke, busted, sick, and disgusted. And that's where they want the populace to be. They want them to be sick. They want them to be broke. They don't want them to be free. But when you free your mind, you free your body, you, you start opening your life up. Um, August the 17th, 2003 is the night that I physically literally woke up. Now, for the, for the people that don't know me or never heard my story before, this, this is the part... This is the part where I talk about being depressed for about nine months. Mm -hmm. uh, literally, my wife had left me after 20 years of a marriage, and I reached the end of me. I was losing my home. My cars were, were, were gone. All my money was gone. So I had to get to that part, point to be so broken in my life and my mind and my spirit that must have been what was able to allow the Holy Spirit to come into my life but that night I literally was going to take my life I had snuck a 357 Magnum from my daddy's house in, in a, a town Greenwood Greenville 50 miles apart but um yeah I was going to literally bear down on the trigger and out of my chest came the word grace. Mm. It literally stopped me dead in my tracks. Now, I must have said the first earnest prayer I've ever said since I was five years old, five to eight, when I was going to church, I was thinking about praying and how to pray. But that night, as soon as that happened, I just, I said, Father, please take these thoughts of suicide, depression, anxiety out of me. I haven't slept in nine months, more, four or five hours, and keep waking up with these worms crawling through my mind, my mind. And the next thing I know, I'm pulling myself up off the bed. I didn't even recognize the room. I did not have a clue what day it was, what year it was, what month it was. All I knew was I was supposed to be horribly upset about something. And then I realized that my mind was completely still, hmm. that it, it, I had to actually go into my heart and feel it for just an instance, what that had felt like. And so what I was instantly delivered of is how to forgive myself and others. And hmm. that was a gift. That was that, was that very thing that led this to happen, I said, oh my God, God is real. And every cell in my body vibrated. And literally, it's like the room just bursted into light. Wow. And a smile came on my face. And I realized that it had been 12 hours from, from four o'clock that morning to four o'clock that evening is when I pulled myself off of that bed. Mm. I had been doing the, the, the panicking part in my life from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock. The dark night of the soul is kind of what they call that. Yeah. It happens to other people. It's happened to me. Some people trans, make their trans, transit. They transcend then. 
into another another reality, another body, another life. Some people have said I'm a walk-in. And um, I don't know if I'm a walk-in or not, but I know that I'm, I'm totally different. Um, all of the things that were really deep and loving to my life, I'm still, I still love them deeply, but I'm not attached. That attachment fell away within that day. Wow. Um, so I wasn't, I, all, all of a sudden, I wasn't attached to losing my house. I wasn't, I wasn't emotionally tied to my children, my grown children that at that time were, were still teenagers. But um, it gave me a, a, a peace to realize that something had happened to me. I didn't know what had happened, but I knew something had happened. So I went around town. Look, I ain't been out of the house in nine months. Mm. Literally, I wouldn't even take the garbage out till it got dark late at night and I wouldn't even go in and do anything unless it was dark at night. But um, all of a sudden I'm in the daylight and I'm telling everybody, I think I found Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know exactly where he is. <laughs> the more I talk to people for that first day and then that second day, um, all of a sudden I'm standing in a cousin's driveway with my brother there yet, you know, and, He's, he's wondering what in the world's going on. But the girl kind of knew. She kind of knew. And this car drove by, and she waved. And all of a sudden, this big Cadillac pulled in, and it was Sister Emily Lindley. And she, she said, I seen y'all standing here. We're having a church meeting. <laughs> and um, sure enough, I went that night, and I, I – Emily was playing the piano when I walked into the church and I recognized her and I smiled. She smiled at me and I, there was a connection like, you know, like just something deep. And so the preachers pray it to people, I, you know, there's a, there's a formula and a similar a, a, a order of things. Right. I didn't really understand how late I was at that church. I just, you know, <laughs> when I got there, I got there, but evidently they had been going for a while. <laughs> <laughs> You're right and, uh, on time. So people were coming up for prayer, and I didn't understand the order, so I went up, and but there were a couple of people in front of me, and all of a sudden, I, I fell out in the spirit. Nobody caught me. Nobody knew which way I was going to fall. I might have looked like I was going forward, <laughs> and then I went backwards. <laughs> but when I hit the ground, you know, the church floor, I seen a vision. Uh, I seen a little understanding of what had happened to me the night that I woke up. Mm. I realized that we are all one. Yes. And that the universal consciousness of the I am of what God is, was always in me, with me, through me, not only in this life, but forever. I have mm -hmm. always been in you and everybody listening to us is that mm -hmm. eternal. There was no beginning, there was no end, of, but there is a beginning and an end to what buddy is, the body, the physical me. But the connection that I made that night with that vision um, opened up the fact that I had been downloaded that night that I pulled myself off the bed. And then I could understand a little bit more of information that I was told that night that I'd be walking into. And so Pentecost was one of them. And um, going to church with Emily, because we became close buddies, and she wanted me to go to church because she knew I needed to know the fundamentals, Matthew, Luke, Mark, and John, and the basics. And um, But my Pentecost didn't last but about three months. <laughs> and I was asked to leave that church. <laughs> that was first, that was my first church that they kicked me out of, and I was I was kind of glad. I I, I kind of seen the writing on the wall, but um, I love the preacher. You know, he he did what he did because he had to do it. He had to say what he had to say, and I had to feel the emotion of what it felt like to go through Pentecost. So I walked into an understanding that all of the churches were misleading the people 
just as I accused him of not teaching how powerful our words are and how this understanding of what God is needed to be taught. Well, it ain't my job to tell the preacher what to preach, but I was asking questions that he couldn't answer, that he didn't want to answer. But I, I couldn't understand why he was preaching a powerful devil. Mm. It just didn't go, it just didn't set with me mm -hmm. because it's way more to the story of what, you know, uh, Satan and, and the devil and all that is in this reality. But Emily Limley had been off the road for about eight years. And so that first week, she said there was a man coming to town and you've got to meet him, buddy. His name is Tupelo Joe. And so I said, yeah, I want to meet him. So he was supposed to drive in at a certain time. I was there and he pulled up in a Lincoln Continental, kind of a big car. And she didn't tell me how old he was. She was at that time 87. Wow. And he, he was 91. It took him 15 minutes to get out of that car. He had a stroke and this arm, the right arm and right leg was, you know, crippled up. But it took him time to get out of the car. I was very patient because he had a big smile on his face. And he just, you know, I knew I, knew I was going to instantly love him. But when he got into the kitchen, we sat at the round table she had, and he commenced to ask me questions about my awakening. And he wanted to know how it went down and what had happened and, and what triggered it in, in, in you know, my life. So I said a few things to him, and he turned his Bible over to, um, you know, the part in Moses where um, Exodus where Moses gets the I am and he says, yeah. you tell them I am sent you. That's right. That's the first thing this man of God, this Christ conscious being said to me about the Bible. And he said, what does that mean to you? Well, I had already had a download. So I kind of knew that I am that I am. Yes. And I looked him dead in the eyes and I said, that is what this is. This consciousness is the I am, and that's who I am. And that's what, the, that's what that verse was trying to show us and teach us. It's all through the scriptures, from one end of that Bible to the other, of how powerful that we are. There's not one of us that doesn't have the gift. You may not know it. It can lay latent for years and years. It, it may have to come to a time in your life where you, you get down and you don't have no other way to go but up. But at that point, that's when you'll find out what, what it means to have peace. Um, the word Buddha, let's just get right to that point. You see him over my shoulder right here. That's the uh -huh. big Buddha, kind of fat Buddha. Yeah. That's Buddha of blessing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's a gift to, to really, you know, to really understand the word, not the, not Buddha Shaka Moody. The, the one that actually walked physical, physical earth and what he, he did to have find enlightenment within him and his way. Uh, the word just means the awakened, not the awakened one, but the awakening. And we're going through a transition in this reality at a faster and faster pace of people awakening. And that was one of the things that Joe Turner recognized within that conversation and he said that he had he had been told in prophecy that people were going to start waking up like me mm -hmm. and so i was a a sign for him because he said before he left this earth he he was told he would see this and so that's from that night we set a path to get back together he was on his way to Texas, but he was knew he knew he wanted to come back. And him and Emily had started the process of talking about me driving them around to churches where they could uh, evangelize and start dropping these nuggets. They called it nuggets of truth. Ah, and um, so literally, we went into the evangelist with them and some of the churches they hadn't been in in eight years, 
So it was like a shock. They loved us. They welcomed us. They listened to us. I didn't do a whole lot of talking, but Joe would be the preacher, and he had a little bit of a slur in his speech and a southern accent. Emily would play the piano, and she played it like Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard, if you know what I mean. You know, like really hitting the keys. You know, that was her style. And she sung. And, but she would just all of a sudden stop the song in the middle of the song, and she would give out a word. And it would be deep. And I could notice that the people would react. And um, then she would say something to Joe, and Joe would understand what she was saying, and he would give a word. So it wasn't, it wasn't, they were working together. She would, she would give him an idea, and he'd go with it. And then all of a sudden, he'd stop, and she'd start back playing the piano. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought we were such a big hit. <laughs> I, I thought these people are going to love us. This is going to turn into two days of really interesting uh, eye-opening conversations. And But, you know, it didn't take long that the preacher asked us to move on down the road. <laughs> they just couldn't take the truth. Mm -hmm. And I, I asked Emily, I said, Emily, is this, is this supposed to happen? Or are y'all supposed to get asked to leave? And she said, yeah, because I'm not going to sell out what God is. Mm -hmm. And that's what literally had happened to her. And she, she was forced to not be able to have, um, how do you say, a revival. Mm -hmm. supposed to last two weeks it lasted four months in Greenwood Mississippi people were being healed her sister was preaching and Emily was helping her sister and this revival attracted people from all over the world I guess the year was 1973 74 somewhere in that era and Literally, the uh, Assembly of God told Emily that he was going to put a padlock on that door if she let another man that didn't hold the card of Assembly of God preach. And there were some people there that had come from California that were full hmm. of, the, of the truth of God back in 1973. It stopped the spirit of what God was right then. So, buddy, you basically went from waking up having this Christ encounter, you mentioned a phrase that some people thought you were, you had, you were a walk-in. And I really believe that you were. I believe that Christ just walked right into you. And you went from uh, being totally depressed, nine months, would not leave the house, would not go out in the light, and uh, just wanting to kill yourself, to all at once having a Christ encounter. And then God just supernaturally staged people to be right there in your life. And you went from that to evangelism. <laughs> and, and seeing miracles. And seeing and, miracles and, and helping to perform them. Yeah, yeah. Well, just being a facilitator. I had to learn real quick uh, to keep my mouth shut and pay attention to Emily and Joe. But um, Joe could heal people. And now this is who's, this is what the first understanding when I witnessed him do it, I I said Joe after he did it and we're back you know talking in private, I said Joe you you really healed that woman and she literally had paperwork saying she was deaf in one ear, and Joe touched her on the ear, and she could hear, and she got excited. And that was, you know, that was a miracle. That's one of the first I've seen. I've seen many over that two-year period. But Joe said this after I said, Joe, you healed that woman. He said, buddy, if anybody ever tells you they can heal you, run from them. And I, I went, okay, <laughs> explain. And he had to explain. So he went deep into the metaphysical understanding of how the healings are done and, and the purpose in, in doing them. There is a rhyme and a reasoning and a time and a season for everything. And he knew that 
he was one with that person mm -hmm. on a molecular structure down into the actual quantum I am. He mm -hmm. described it as the only way that he could ever do it would be that he can connect to the oneness that they are. And that is the same as he is. There's not a bunch of us around here. It's just really one of us. And when he explained that to me, I was like, oh my God, these people are crazy. You know, <laughs> Emily and Joe both are crazy. And, and, you know, I had to pay attention and try to understand what he was saying because I didn't have the, um, the, I didn't have the, the knowledge that there were other groups of people like that. Mm -hmm. So during that first trip, we went to a group of people in Maryville, Tennessee. And that was a church that Joe had, had been for quite a few years, bringing them into a consciousness understanding of the I am. So they were open. In other words, the preacher just wasn't the only one that spoke. Mm -hmm. Everybody spoke. Mm -hmm. Anybody that was in the spirit and could say what that group needed to hear that night, anybody could speak. And that's when I started really realizing that there was a lot of people that were thinking in this oneness, in this Christ conscious I am thinking. And of course, I was led to books. Joe Turner, 91, gave me a book. It was Edgar Hart Tull, The Power of Now. And I'm dyslexic, never really been able to read a comic book and enjoy it. So I had to get an audio of that book and before I could actually enjoy that book. That book blessed me tremendously. It took me down into uh, the other types of um, downloads and the other out-of-body experiences, that was where I'd sat at a council of, of light beings around a table, just like Joe, Emily, and I, the first night we sat there and he told me about Exodus. Well, come to find out, these, these next downloads within that next three months were showing me the whole picture the secrets of the universe so just to be clear you after you woke up okay after your nine month experience and stuff and you gave birth to yourself or like a woman carries a child for nine months and and uh, you became and uh then you went into this evangelism and you know you said something about um that they they, they taught you that you have to become one with the person in order to to manifest healing and that's kind of like what Jesus, uh, what the Bible speaks about Yeshua, Jesus, that he had compassion. And so you have to have a love for people. You have to be able to feel them and become one, even at that molecular level, uh, that I am consciousness, quantum level, to manifest that. And so it, I think it was very powerful the way you said it, because it's actually you're healing yourself because you realize that you're one with everyone and everything. And so if someone has a dis-ease or illness and you become one with them and you, you so feel with love and compassion, you know, and you love yourself also. So you release that power to heal yourself. Therefore you're healing someone else. It's a facilitating. Yeah. And that, that was the point that Joe wanted to make. It wouldn't work if it wasn't meant to work. Right. When it's meant to work, it's magic. It's like the greatest miracle that can happen from one, one kiss being to another kiss being. Hmm. They used to call us eye gazers because hmm. when you really seen someone that you, you can connect with and you knew you had a word for them or, or, or you were just supposed to be there to enlighten them with your love. Right you can look into their eyes and they can look into your eyes and you resonate it with them. It's, they called it, I learned that they called it vibrating. You know, uh, you, it was a vibration and everything I've come to find out. Everything is a vibration, but it, we, that's what, it, that's what the universe is. And can you, can you go a little bit deeper in your experience where you sit around the table with these light beings 
and how the mysteries of the universe was just began to be revealed to you. Can you just share a little bit more about that? I can, I can give you this, that during those times, I was being filled and I could feel the emotions and everything of what they're saying. Yeah. And, and they, it just triggered, you know, the synapses in my brain to understand this, understand that. But I got to say this because this is, this is what happened in my case. As we're winding this thing up, this download, this out of body experience, one of them, and that it's like the Joe character. I, I can't see him. I can't see, I can't see nobody around the table's faces, but they all have a similarity of a person or, or someone that I'm either going to meet or I already met, but they would all, this Joe character would say, yeah, but when we put you back in your body, you're not going to remember nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to walk into it. And, and I, I remember that point of walking into it. And then I started, as my awakening days started unfolding in front of me, I started realizing that I, if I pay a lot of attention to kind of everything, and be, you know, with my mind being completely still, just instantly given the gift of, of meditating, transcendental meditating, wow. um, I al already was able to heal myself. At that point, that very next day, I had the beginning of a headache, and the spirit had me lay down and go into my heart. This is day one. Mm -hmm. And the spirit was guiding me into this deep, deep meditation to get me to my heart. And once I got there, the spirit said, those migraines that you've had for all your life, one a week, two sometimes, crippling type migraines, the spirit said, you can't have a headache. You're not a body. <laughs> Headaches went away. What? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't have a headache because you're not a body. And I accepted it all the way down to my cells, my DNA, to the very essence of what I am. And to this day, I do not have headaches. I can have the feeling of one coming on, but I can instantly say, no, this is, this is, this is not who I am. It doesn't happen. And I can, I can infer that information to, to people, and if they get it, they can use it and have fun and, and get rid of their headaches. But Do you think that this could also work for people with cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart problems? It, it does, and it will, and it can. And um, that's the secret that the ultra elites the ones that are the rulers of this matrix, they call them the Illuminati, call them whatever you want to call them. They have known these secrets of this lost modality of healing since, since eons. They've kept mm -hmm. us sick for the reasoning to keep the secret about it. I thought the church had it. I thought the church was going to teach this and so I was happy to get back in amongst people, but come to find out some of your sickest people are in church and they, they don't even see the words of Jesus, Yahshua, what he wrote about who was the one doing the healing. We're the physician. We're the ones that actually can nip it in the bud. So as I was doing this modality with Emily and Joe, I noticed they, they were, had so much energy. She's 87, he's 91. We can drive for 14, 1,400 miles, get to a place, and I'm thinking, they're going to crash because I'm ready to crash. <laughs> we don't crash. We kick off a service. And Emily and Joe continue into the night, late, and she gets two hours, three hours sleep, and she's back up the next morning preparing breakfast and fixing stuff and talking again, you know. And that meeting starts at, you know, 7, 8 o'clock and it goes all day. 
and they just kept on. They had so much energy. And then I realized if I pay attention to how they're speaking and how they're talking, they're telling themselves that they are the I am and that they're blessed and have much favor. And they speak in life to themselves. So I asked Emily within the first week, I heard her doing it. And I said, Emily, uh, what are you doing? And she said, well, buddy, I'm, I'm wanting to teach you this. I hope you can catch it. And I said, well, let me try. <laughs> and she started speaking to her cells and her DNA. And she says, I love each atom, each cell, each nucleus of each molecule. I speak life with the love and peace of the I am that my body is regenerating. I am becoming that I say I am. I'm becoming younger and younger, stronger and stronger, healthier and healthier. And she said, buddy, I can only go so far, but I'm giving it to you. You can only go so far to regenerate and rebuild your body. She said, you teach it to the young people. When one of them gets it, they'll all start understanding it. And then the ones that can really transfer this into the, the real understanding are the children of the children that you teach because they will not walk in a world where they see sickness and death because it'll be gone by that time Whoa. because our true nature is to live in perfect health. Hallelujah. To live a long, happy, prosperous life. Hmm. She was 97 when she left, left her body. Wow. And Joe... Wow. Joe was, he was 90, 95. I, he left, let me put it like this. Joe called me before he laid his body down. I'm on the phone with him. Hey, Joe. He said, buddy, you're going to hear an uh, untimely rumor of my untimely demise. But I'm here to tell you, I laid my body down. No. I, I, he said, I, I'm 95. I've got this real serious nerve thing going on. And he said, um, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm only calling a few people, only letting a few know. And so see, that's something that's lost in this world. That's true. They don't teach how to leave. Mm -hmm. They don't let us know that we are the ones that told ourselves when we were coming into this world. That's and we're right. the ones that tell in peace and love and harmony that we're laying it down. Hmm. The art of teaching that is messy. Just let's just say this again because this is so powerful. You know, you said that you learn to speak to yourselves. You learn to speak to your DNA, and you know, modern science today are confirming that you can literally speak to your DNA and it will change the sequencing of the DNA code. So you can literally stand in the mirror or however you want to do it and speak to your body until you begin to manifest health and wholeness. And that is very powerful because the power of life and death is in our tongues. It's there. And we need to speak and prophesy upon our bodies. Prophesy health. Prophesy wholeness, prophesy uh, incorruption, immortality. And another thing you just said about Joe, that, that he laid his body down. Now, you know, we believe in immortality, physical immortality. We teach immortality. However, some will get immortality, as I call it, standing up. Some will get it laying down, you know. And those who decide to lay their body down they're no less than those of us that stand up and receive it, you know, and it's just so powerful because, you know, Yeshua, he says, no man takes my life. I have the power to lay it down and to raise it up again. And, you know, he could have been on that cross 2000 years later, yet dying and bleeding if he desired, desired to. But the scripture clearly says he gave up the ghost. He literally says, okay, now it's like the, he died from the, the ninth hour. And so I think I will just lay this down for a few days and then I'm going to pick it up again. And so that's what you're saying, that we have the authority, we have the power to decide when we want to go, if we want to go or to stay. And it's based on what we say and what we believe. That is powerful. It, it is that truth. And, and the scripture says death has no sting. Mm -hmm. And the last great enemy to be defeated is death. Right. Brother, I'm going to tell you something. 
days nobody ever died. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There is no death. <laughs> there is no such thing as death in the God reality. That's true. And, and now, as far as the NPCs, the non-player characters that this world is proliferated with, yeah, there's death, sickness, and disease everywhere. Mm -hmm. But when I seen them have perfect health, for their age and for when they started speaking life. So Emily had started around that 1970 time. So 75, 80. So she had, she had been speaking life for a kind of a small time in her life. She caught on to it at, at a later age. I caught on to it at the time I caught on to it. And I've been able to reverse the aging process within my body. I'm a witness to that. <laughs> I'm constantly testing the limits of, of what I can do. And then I ride a road bicycle and I expect fully to keep riding that road bicycle until I'm 120. <laughs> and you, can you just, just expound a little bit? Because I'm a witness to this, that, that, that a buddy has reversed the aging process in his body. And uh, can you just like tell a little bit about before your awakening, how you were physically and everything. And as, and as you began to speak to your body, what happened? The whole thing about the before buddy awakening to the Buddha is that everything I did, I did unconsciously. I ate unconsciously. I slept unconsciously. I mingled with people unconsciously. I didn't realize who was creating the reality that I was co inhabiting in. And when I became aware of my thoughts, that I could be consciously aware of every thought, mm. then I realized that I was creating my reality. So see, the night that I woke up where I said I couldn't feel what I was supposed to be so upset about, that was the illusion. The illusion was that I had all of that grief and all of that, uh, I don't even have the words for it, but you know how you people get, re they want revenge. Yeah, bitterness. And bitterness and, and they want to, yeah, yeah, all that leaves. You can't even talk about it in a, in a normal kind of way because no one, the old buddy had been a victim but the new buddy could never have been a victim because mm -hmm. it was only my thoughts that were creating the incidences to happen. Wow. So when a man told me this, and I'll tell you who this man is in a minute, but he said, picture your wife that left you as she's coming across the stage and you give her an Academy Award because she did a jam up job. And she did. She did a jam up job and I love her. I tell her when I talk to her on the phone, we talk about my children, my grown children. I tell her, I love you. And she says, you can always say that, but do you really mean it? And I said, you better believe it. I mean it. I love that woman. Now, that is what God used to break me. And that made me have this awakening reality of where we're in this world and this world is being being created not only just my thoughts but it's the collective collective consciousness of the masses that the dark side uses to control how much sickness it is and how much war it is and everything but all that can cease within us when we realize that we can have peace in the storm no matter what's going on in the world you can always you can always see it for what it is. Yeah, It's a big old game. Mm -hmm. And when you see that, then you can relax and you can get about decoding it. You mentioned the cells, the DNA. The codons of love and light are coming from each center of each atom as mm -hmm. it does from the Milky Way center sun. Mm -hmm. And that center sun is releasing these up codes of the codons and these up codes of codon are flooding the earth mm -hmm. and it's it's a photon wave yes it is this photon wave is sending more photons ever that has ever been recorded used to the sun our sun was yellow 
and that sun was sending us photons and somewhere it changed to a white sun six years ago i was a sun gazer and i'm telling you brother right now you cannot sun gaze because as soon as it comes above the horizon it's so bright so white and but see that day's changed but that means the scientists had to admit that we're receiving more photons from the center of the milky way galaxy than we are now and that's causing all these planets to warm up energetically so we're in a time of change and a time of quickening and yeah. and that's what joe recognized was it was it was time for people i'm not the first one this this galactic shift of of the ages had actually started in 1986 some of the first forerunners harmonic conversions the harmonic conversions <laughs> all over the world and they came together i kind of like in my stupor sleep days you know i kind of remember you know seeing them talk about them people dressed in white robes getting in a circle and everybody being happy and it wasn't 1969 because that happened another way mm -hmm. that could have woke us up but the dark side shut us down and they're trying to shut us down right now but they will not prevail. Thank they can't you. prevail. They can't. You know, you said something that's, that's very uh, just powerful. I want to just touch on. You talked about the photons that's coming into our reality that's helping to create this paradigm shift and, and to change us. And this change is even at the subatomic level. Now, and I, I teach a lot about that, the sun rays. The scripture says that Unto those who fear my name shall the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness arise with healing in its wings. Now, the Hebrew basically says, basically talking about solar flares. Now, you're talking about this, this, uh, this photon energy. There's another scripture in the book of Job, chapter 38, where uh, Yahweh is basically interrogating Job, and he says, can you bind the sweet influences of the Pleiades? Now, in that Palladian, the Palladian star system, there is what the scientists are calling the golden ring. It is a band of photon energy. And that band of photon energy has been expanding over the last decade. And actually, our whole solar system is being immersed in that photon energy. And that photon energy, photons are like the smallest particle of light. I call it spirit, like, you know. It has zero matter, and you have we all have photons within us. And you mentioned about the codons, and I'm just kind of like just touching on these things that you mentioned uh, to help others to understand. Now, in and and with the DNA structure, we have uh, the DNA, you know, structures like uh, you know the, the 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 helixes. You have the the template strand, and you have the complementary strand, and so it is Jacob's ladder, you know. And yes. uh, but the codons are ascending and descending on the ladder, just as Genesis 28. You have literal codons, these things that are sequences of three in in, in uh, groups of threes that ascend and descend. And science even calls them messengers, you know, just as the angels, the messengers were ascended on Jacob's ladder. It was a outward vision of something that is happening within. And those codons are bringing messages and preparing us for this final shift that will not only shift us individually, not only the planet, but the solar system, the galaxy, everything must be shifted into that fifth dimensional reality. And, and it's just so exciting uh, to know this and that we're receiving this energy and something is happening at, in your DNA at the, at the subatomic level. And just uh, give me just one second to just go. You got me excited talking about the codons here. And so, you know, you have 64 codons. Uh, uh, within your body. and But the thing is that only 20 of them are activated. Codon, C-O-D-O-N, and it, it is short for codes on. Those are triggers on your DNA. And so you have about, what, 30 to 40,000 genes. And so, and, and the codons help to trigger them. Now we have 64 codons, but only 20 are operating. We are operating way, way below our level, you know. And as you keep mentioning about they, 
because there is a conspiracy that a lot of people are not aware of. And we gotta give you Buddy's information before this class is over so you can go and check it out. He does a lot of the conspiracy facts, not just theories, but con conspiracy facts. There, there is a conspiracy. There are those behind the scene that want to keep humanity subdued in the dark, broke, busted, and disgusted, and sick, and dying, you know, and only keep a few for just slaves to do the work or whatever, you know, and but thank God that we are waking up. But these 64 codons, as this photon energy comes in more into our reality, and so it's going to activate those those codons 44 of them that are basically dormant there's only been a very few people in the last decade that was born uh with maybe 22 codons turned on and uh i think one with 24 and these people were completely immune to sickness and disease and even science says they may even be immortal because they tested their blood in a petri dish put in AIDS virus and different types of uh, diseases, and it totally rejected. It would not, you know, accept it. And so it, it's very powerful, you know, the time that we're in and the and you're getting, we're getting turned on. The codons within our DNA is being turned on so that we can operate. One other little point here on the codons is that, you know, there are 64 of them. And if you know anything about the, the Chinese ancient text the sacred text it is called the i ching i ching i ching or the i change you know and it's made up of 64 symbols <laughs> now i won't go further with that but the mystery behind that in that ancient text uh are subtle or or hidden ways and codes to interface with the codons just well the the I call them they, but the the rulers of this world and the owners of this world, yeah, they they are the the originators of the mystery schools. They are, and so see they they went around and collected this knowledge, but they're not the masters. Exactly, they were the servants to the Anunnaki, mm -hmm. and they were allowed to have a bloodline to run. A course to get us to this reality of this now of this time continuum but there have been shifts within this timeline and changes due to these glitches in the matrix yes. and that's what they're experiencing right now and that's why they know their time is really short yes. because you can't stop this knowledge from coming forth mm -hmm. and they can like I was talking to Joe and, and this is when we got into understanding these different groups around the country. And I said, Joe, but if we talk on the telephone, they're going to be able to hear, you know, this is, this is way before uh, Edward Snowden. I already knew they were listening to everything. But that's good. That's, that's good for, for us to understand. Because Joe said this. He said, when a I am conscious being is talking to another I am conscious uh, being, yeah. They cannot decode it. They don't, <laughs> they don't. They don't. And I said, Joe, are you telling the truth? He said, Yeah, buddy. I'm. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the way I know it. He said that is a that is an end time thing. Uh, that's why they're trying so hard to monitor all of our social media, everything. everything. Well, I met a guy in 1993. This is in my old life of being asleep. But he told me a thing or two about cell phones and the technology that was behind them leading all the way to right now 5G. You're looking at a person that never had a cell phone contract. I've never owned a cell phone to this day. I do not have a cell phone on my body. Mm. And people wonder, how do I do what I do without a cell phone? It's real easy. I don't want it. I don't need it. If I want to talk, I can just actually think about like I met you, mm -hmm. it was that was this that was the modality. The spirit said, "Call and he will answer the phone." Boom, you answered the phone. You never knew me, but we knew we had a connection, and that is that is the, you know, you mentioned the codons getting down to the atoms. That was one atom talking to another atom, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and that conversation fed you and fed me. Now, every so often we go a whole year, don't even talk, and then we just touch base. But you've seen 
the process and the and the and the change and the transformation in my life i've seen it in yours and if we can do anything to help anybody is to try to pass on this gift of of how how blessed we really are and what it means to speak life and what it does it what does it mean to actually believe it see it's one thing to speak to your atoms but it's another thing to get it all the way down into the very nucleus of the dna molecule especially the mitochondria mm. and and the mitochondria is the key behind this yes when mm. i got to the the mitochondria cells are the most important but when i got to this that's where i was like leaving myself messages and i was walking into this they said you will you will understand the secrets of the universe but you got to walk into it when i got to the mitochondria part you you have so many you have to have a chief the chief of the mitochondria and i put him in charge of all of the mitochondria i don't talk to all of them i just talk to the chief and every now and then i check in with the chief and the chief says buddy everything is on target everything is working good all systems are up and running and i go thank you god and and you know really it is funny but august the 17th 2003 Laura Fifield, my love of my life. She's witnessed my life for the last seven, eight years. She can testify that I have not been sick. Mm -hmm. I may get a, a like the symptoms of the flu. I can throw it off in 24 hours. And everybody around us is sick for two weeks. I'm not saying I'm special, but I'm saying the awakening process has did things to my body consciously i started not eating processed food mm -hmm. consciously i started eliminating things in my diet that needed to be eliminated and that's the old me was not conscious of, of that importance exercise and moving the body is very important and that was the thing that started the regeneration process Mm -hmm. down into my muscles my you know really down into the bones the ligaments the cartilage I had a knee injury and that masked the back injury in 2005 so I had to be sedentary for almost two years I couldn't hardly walk with and the nerve damage got so bad it went all the way down to my ankle and the left leg they gave me their diagnosis well I told them that enough was enough <laughs> and i started rebuilding the the body to get it back into optimum condition and um so i'm having uh, i'm having a real <laughs> interesting start to a cold winter and doing things i thought i, I could wouldn't going to do but um yeah i can i can actually get out and do my fast old man walk in <laughs> uh, 27 degree weather today well, you, you, you bike ride, you run, you walk. I mean, you are so active. I, uh, you have a, a, a YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel called? Uh, Buddy Huggins. Buddy Huggins, B-U-D-D-Y-H-U-G-G-I-N. And, uh, you know, I-N-S. I-N-S, right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and uh, this, this tells a little bit about what maybe your day may go like because you're so active. Well, when, when I'm in full run and full modality, um, uh, just a warm up 45 mile bike ride. And I. Uh, wait, 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 wait. You say it's four or five miles? 45. <laughs> a warm up is a 45 mile bike ride. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I have to build up to that 45. Now, don't get me wrong. And those build ups are 15 out and 15 back. And then I have a lap where I can increase that to 45, 65, 75, 112. And um, that's what I, that's, I, re I rode 5,200 miles last year. This year I want to go for 10,000. I want to double it. Wow. And when I swim, I, I can literally swim nonstop for two hours. And that equals, most of the time it equals right at three and a half miles. Wow. 
you're talking to your cells. You're talking to the chief of the mitochondria DNA. And, and she lets you know that everything's okay. <laughs> it's all working. And um, it, it, we just have to do the tune-ups. We have to eat right. And we have to believe. And um, I, I get melancholy. I get the type of atmosphere where, you know, I want, I want things to go my way. And it don't seem like everything's going my way. And that's when I have to realize that it's my thinking. And then I have to just accept the fact that I, I need to change the way I need to think about what's happening in my life at that point. That's a gift. That, that is a gift. Wow. Boy, this has just been awesome uh, sharing here. The hour has gone by already. I want to just see if someone has a question or want to, are, are you want to take any questions, buddy? Would you like to take any questions or? I'd be uh, happy to. Yeah. Okay, we'll just open up for a little while. We realize you're in a different time zone out there. And, uh, but I, I've really just enjoyed this and been encouraged. And I'm sure that all of you that are here have been encouraged. I mean, he's riding a bike 45 miles a day and he's gonna be riding like, uh, what, uh, 10,000 miles this year. And uh, that's just amazing. And I'm twenty. I'm twenty-one, though. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I remember you told me that, and I asked her. You know, I, I I've been saying that I'm twenty-two, like the number of light, like the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So I'm I'm twenty-two. So you're twenty-one. <laughs> well, let me let me tell you how Emily did me, so we could do. I, I could show you and the people. This is this is how you perceive this. Emily stuck her face finger in my face, and she said, "Buddy, think about it. Don't answer right now." Think about it. And she said, how old are you? And I, I hadn't been knowing her two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, I just really just I kind of was thrown back. Do I give her my chronological age or do I, what do I do? And I, I, I realized that I see out of the eyes of a 21 year old. And so I said, <laughs> I'm 21. And she said, you got it. You got it. And I, I said, well, what if I just said the other age? And she said, that's when you physically came into this physical incarnation. That's a good date and a good age. And, you know, right now in this reality, it's 57. But, but that's a number. And that's what she was telling me that, you know, it's, it's a number. So when I talk to people, I always let them know that whatever they feel, for women, it's usually between uh, 28 and 34 because they're more mature. But for men, it's always like 18 to 24. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree. I, you know, I, I, I've said for years, and I didn't know anyone doing this, and, and I would, it just came to me, came in my spirit. You know, I am ageless, I am immortal, and I am eternal. So when people ask me how old you are, I, I try to separate myself from that human age because of the consciousness of others, they think that you're supposed to look a certain way, act a certain way, dress a certain way, talk a certain way, based on that number and stuff. And so, and I says, I'm ageless. I'm immortal yeah. and I'm eternal. And so are you, you know? <laughs> a few years ago, I seen Richard Branson, the billionaire Richard Branson. I seen him kite boarding with a kite and a board on the ocean. Yeah. And I said, if he could do that, I'm going to do that. And do you know, it took me a couple of years, a few trips to Jamaica. I saw you. <laughs> I have so much fun kiteboarding. It's unreal. I was jealous. You were out there. I don't know. You were, you were there for a long time. And I would see all these images, pictures that you would send and stuff. I was going, how come I'm not there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't. I mean, it, it's hard to do anything in, in two weeks. Like normal people take a vacation. It's two weeks. Um, when you living in the spirit and love of what you are, time is, I'm, I'm free. If I want to go to Jamaica for three months, I go. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay, I see a few hands here. I see, uh, what's this? Uh, Nelly and uh, Andrew. Whoops. You're unmuted. Andrew and Nelly, you're unmuted. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can and see you also. Okay. So I wanted to ask him, I noticed he was using the word incarnation, talking about being ageless, our souls. 
and I wondered what his thoughts were on reincarnation of, of any type. It's an open subject. Um, I'm, I'm always thinking that one day, the next day, I'll hear something and I'll be able to understand it a little bit more. But my understanding is that uh, the, the reincarnation is the part of the matrix of the trap of the life cycle spirit body being inhabited into a physical form. So when someone passes away without the knowledge and the ability to carry memory through death, they get to that life cycle where they go into what they believe is the light. And we're coming to find out that it's just another trap, another form of the matrix. But that would lead them back into a reincarnation of something they needed to know and learn to get them back through to the light. But it, this generation can break that cycle of yes. life and death exactly. and, and go into the light knowing that you are the light. Mm -hmm. And so I am the light. Why do I need to, why do I need to communicate with you or, or my mother or my father, these beings that have went on before and I recognize at the matrix and that way I believe I will stop the, the reincarnation cycle for this, this time. And, um, I could be wrong about that. You know, I, I, I believe that. I just want to add to that because, you know, Yeshua taught that basically. I believe it was in John chapter 9 when uh, there was this man that was born blind and the disciple says, who did sin? Did he or his parents, you know? And so there was the belief, there was a knowledge of reincarnation that souls do come back in other bodies. But Jesus, uh, Yeshua basically says, that that's not the point. The karmic wheel can stop, you know? And once you encounter the glory of God, once you encounter the Christ consciousness, Jesus, however you want to say, once you have that encounter and stuff, you can basically stop that, that karmic wheel where you won't have to come back. You can down, get a download from the spirit of all that you need so that you can carry that on. If you happen to lay the body down, you can carry that on into the next life or you stay here and feel with that and expand that. And so that's true. I, I believe that. We can just stop that. Is that something uh, that is associated with ascension? The concept of ascension? I, it, 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 yeah, it, that can be, you know, I feel that um, once you ascend to, you know, a, a certain level of consciousness. Now, we know that the scripture says that the fullness of God, like, is, is within us all. But once we come to full realization of that, there is no more need to return, you know, uh, to, to, to further our spiritual ed or soulic education so that the soul can continue to evolve. Because, you know, spirit, soul, and body basically comes to that uh, frequency of oneness. And that's what the whole situation is about, becoming one. That's what Yeshua constantly asks the people, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made whole? And that's what humanity wants, spirit, soul, and body, to be made whole. I've got one more question from Buddy. Is it, how um, re re rewriting DNA, was that effective also through any experiences of fasting? I mean, as far as what you went through? It, fasting for me at the very beginning, jumpstart everything. Mm -hmm. um, so literally, I had never understood the process of fasting, but was easily able when the body said so to do a three day and the three day went by really well. And then that led into like a nine day. And so that gets me about into the point of um, three months into my awakening. And I realized that, well, this is what Emily showed me by literally how much she ate. She would literally eat what could go in the palm of her hand. Wow. And she was getting more energy from consciousness and the sun and, and the, cosmic, the cosmic rays. And literally Joe did the same thing. When he came into my life, I started paying attention to him. And 
it is amazing at how little food we really need. Now we need water. So there's, you know, the water fast kind of thing is, is, is really good. And just consciously eating, knowing, knowing that when you're eating, uh, you want the taste, you want everything about it. It makes the difference. You choose, you start choosing the right foods. Amen. I think Asher had his hand up. Do you have a question, Asher? Uh, yes. Um, I was trying to understand um, a little bit more about the codons. Can you just explain that a little bit more? In, in, in my simple way, it's like I'm talking to I'm talking to my cells and my atoms. And see, so I have a, like a mantra, and I can show you my mantra, but you got to pick your own style. And now, when I'm doing it, I say, I speak life with the resurrected power of the I am, because that's what the words Joe Turner used, but he said them a little different. So when I'm starting the process of really speaking that, that life-given power to each atom, each cell, so it can upcode to its original blueprint not the deviant see we're living in a deviant blueprint we have to modify and change it on a daily basis so you got to say this like twice a day and my my life is twice a day when i get up in the morning and then before i go to bed at night but when i'm in a workout mode and i'm literally swimming or riding the bike i go into a state of transcendental meditation and i can re speak life and I just do it, you know, like this. I say it. I speak with the resurrected power of the I am. I speak that I am becoming that that I say I am. I'm becoming that of a 21-year-old elite Olympic athlete specializing in decathlons and triathlons, kiteboarding, swimming, biking, cycling, walking, running. I speak that I am becoming younger and younger, stronger and stronger, healthier and healthier. I speak that there is no disease in this body temple from the tips of my feet to the top crown of my head to every atom. And then I go to cutting tentacles and pulling disease out of my body. <laughs> you know, we are, there are tentacles attached to us and people don't mean to do it, but that every day you've got to cut those tentacles. Every day you've got to flush these these disease, this darkness, this negativity out of us. And I use, personally, I'll just give you this. I use Archangel Michael, Gabriel, Metatron. Y y Wait. These Your voice went out. Okay. You, you said, you said you, you, it's, you're back now. You use Archangel. Archangel Michael, Gabriel, Metatron, Uriel. Any Archangel known or unknown to me that can assist in this clearing and clearing and cleansing of, of the negativity, disease, darkness, implants, nanobots now, and smart dust yeah. now. Yeah. You know, I used to not say that, but I've, had, I've had to add on to the nanobots and the smart dust. And um, if, if somebody shows me there's another word for some type of implant, I'll incorporate that. Mm -hmm. But it's a mantra and it's in, it, in my life it works. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for sharing. I see Gina has her hand up. Um, okay, your mic is on. So am I, is it just a like um, a newer millennial thing? But I feel like a lot of this stuff should just be happening. Like, I know that there's power in your words and there's power in all that you say, but I feel like I, I'm just waiting for like something so extraordinary to happen where I just am now outside of my house or like I, I just I guess I don't really know how to put it but I'm just in my mind and my imagination and the way I think about things I just feel like it's I sh it should already have happened or I, it should already be do you get what I'm trying to say? I, I, I do, and I, and I had to learn a process from, from Emily and Joe. And let me see if this will help, help you. Um, 
Joe would say I'm blessed and got much favor. So I started incorporating that into my everyday life. I started incorporating it to the point that I would be producing the days ahead of me, five days ahead, maybe a week ahead. But I would say I was blessed and had much favor. And I, at the beginning, I said I had money coming to me five ways. And literally, it started manifesting. And that is gets into the law of attraction and the understanding of what is the most important thing. Because the, the law of attraction could be materialism, but the true understanding of the law of attraction is to heal the most important thing about you is your thinking and your body. When you can master that point of the law of attraction, the rest of it takes care of itself. I changed it to I'm blessed and have much much favor i have money coming to me 500 ways and <laughs> what i'm feeling really prosperous is 500 if it's not so much it drops all the way back to 30 ways you know i have money coming to me 30 ways and um but that sets the that sets the will to bring it to you and it, if i'm if I'm really like, I have been in a dry spot, you know, where it seems like I'm not seeing it manifest, but what I'm actually realizing is it's okay. This is winter time. This, you know, this is the time that I'm not at my peak about anything, much less thinking. Mm -hmm. it's, it's part of my nature. I'm, a, I'm Aries the Ram. I start bouncing back this time of year, January. February. By the time I get to March, I'm ruling. I'm, I'm, I'm set the pace for April, May, June, July. But I come all the way back around to October. And if you can look at my um, um, Striva, that's the app that actually tracks all our activity for athletes. And I'm on Striva. And I just, all of a sudden in October, November, December, it's just very little activity. I took two months off this year to heal my body, to work on doing nothing when it comes to just resting. Everybody has that time. It's different for everybody. That's hard. Yeah. Hard. It's hard to rest because you feel like things aren't happening. I haven't worked since July, so I'm, I'm sitting here, okay, Lord, what's going on sitting in that peaceful place it's so awkward because you're so used to having all this stuff around you and all this other stuff going on and i think it's really important that what you said about cutting those tentacles on you because one of the things that i've been feeling is that i'm being pulled in so many different directions by everybody else's will that i haven't been conscious to my own as much and so i think that i'm maybe expecting things to happen faster or outside of their time because I don't want to be in this place where everybody else is pulling on me. Mm. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to build myself up. I want to get where I need to be in Christ consciousness without everybody weighing me down. Cut, when you cut the tentacles, you literally see it and fit and, and physically speak it that they're being cut severed and the ends are being fused together so you got a tentacle it's been cut you take that tentacle you fuse the ends together but they continue cutting you know i believe archangel michael is the one with the sword and so you can visualize him with not only just sword but actually scissors two swords together and when he when he cuts them he fuses the ends together and the actual disease is in your body for that day, the sickness, the darkness, and the negativity, and the implants, the nanobots, and the smart dust is all gathered, gathered together. And the final little gist of this is that it's thrown to the far side of the universe and turned to space dust. <laughs> you know, and another thing I think I heard you say was uh, that you have to know what season you're in. You have to know what season. Maybe it is not your spring right now, but spring is coming. You know, yes. maybe yes. it's not your summer right now, but summer is coming. But we all go through those phases in our lives and those seasons. And you know when your season is. 
And, uh, and you know when your season is not just because it is March, but it's kind of like based on the time of your birth. And I thought that was unique because you're an Aries. And so when the sun is lighting up your house on the tropical, you know, uh, astrological chart and stuff, you are energizing, you're doing more. And so you might want to, for those of you listening, you might want to, that are in various seasons, you might want to think about that, you know, uh, when is the sun in your sign and just align yourself and receiving that, uh, that energy. Now, I think we're going to do one more question here. Uh, I see Rosemary has her hand up and she has a question for Buddy. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you this time. <laughs> oh, great. I finally got together. Uh, I, I greet you, my brother, Buddy. I have a question. I just came from my eye doctor today and I've been going quite a bit. And it seems like a manifestation of my mother went blind with glaucoma. And I have been dealing with this for a while, the pressure in my eyes. And he was trying to tell me today that I'm going to have to use uh, pressure drops for glaucoma for the rest of my life. I'm going to have to go back on prednisone. And I just flat out told him that, you know, I just, I'm not receiving this. Exactly. I, I, I'm just not. I just, that's just not for me. And what I would like to know is, I, I know I can speak life. I can speak wholeness and healness. One of the things I am not at, uh, good at, I'm not at, at being active. I, I, I don't have a lot, I haven't had a lot of energy, but I see now that kind of goes together. You got to get up and get moving. So I just want to know, am I right in that with the uh, confessing that my, I, I have 20, 20 vision, which I've always had, but for some reason, you know, things are trying to look different, but should I incorporate being physically active with my affirmation? Does that seem to bring things about better? It shows that you're taking action. And oh. anytime, anytime that you're, you're doing this, you have to take action. And one of the, one of the techniques that I can give you, I, I feel to, and a lot of people won't receive what I'm fixing to say, but I'm going to go ahead and say it for you, for your situation. Okay. There is a dimensional self of you that is a higher vibration. Yes. When you lay your body down at night and you sleep, you're mm -hmm. sleeping in the third dimension. But there is a blessing for us that is a, don't let me lose you, but there is a mothership okay. that is a fifth, sixth, seventh dimensional ship that's from Ontario. And it's a healing ship with doctors on it. All and right. These doctors, when you request that you're going, I, I made my request today for the whole, from, from today till Monday next week, a uh, whole week that I'm going every night that I sleep and I reaffirm it. But what you do is you say, and you're speaking of the, of the I am or the, the Christ power, that yes, this yes. night you wish to go to the healing chambers and you wish to have the doctors there work on your eyes and you wish that whatever the the modality that is needed for it to happen in that physical realm manifests down into your body and so when you wake up in the morning you say thank you thank you for the offer to allow me to go to the healing chambers and allow the doctors there to work on me because the doctors on earth will kill you. Yes, I found that out. <laughs> I, no, no, seriously, I have found it out. It's like an awakening me. Uh, I even did a test to stop taking some medication they had given me. They didn't know I had stopped. And they were telling me, oh, it's working just fine. <laughs> I continue to pick up the prescriptions, but I do not take them. And you'd be surprised. My glucose level is coming down from 300 to now 201. Two, two, mm -hmm. I'm not to 101, 120, sometime 117. Wow. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. Well, do, do, the so. part, do the part with the healing chamber. If it vibrates oh, wow. with you and it feels right with you, that ship is there and you can request to go. And then once you do it a few times, you, you'll, you'll, feel, you'll feel yourself accepting it and believing it. It has to be all the way down into your atoms. Let me give you this piece right here. There are foods for the eyes. Mm -hmm. And it's a real simple food. It's carrots. 
if you're not eating carrots, you need to put carrots in everything you eat, stews and raw and just any time you think about your eyes, kind of think about what it, what can I cook carrots in next? <laughs> I just told my son I'm making a soup tonight. He went to get the ingredients and carrots was what was told to me to put in there. Carrots, he said a bit of sweet potato. That's confirmation. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank I, you. I had it. I received it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're going to do one more question here. Uh, Fabian has his hand up. And then after this question, buddy, I want you to just... Uh, just uh, invoke the spirit realm and release healing, release deliverance, release, just go as spirit leads you after this last question here. Uh, Fabian has his hand up. Okay, let me get to you there. Okay, can you, I am trying to unmute you, but it is, okay, there you go. Can you hear me? Yeah. What about now? Yes, we can hear okay, you. Okay, um, I, I didn't have a question, but um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Yes. Okay, I, I hope uh, Rosemary is still on there. She is. Be, uh, this um, it wasn't a question, but she was talking about glaucoma. I, 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 I was very encouraged to share with her what the Lord has done, what I have personally saw with my own... Um, my own experiences. And one of them was uh, back in uh, 2015, right after I came back from uh, a trip uh, in Canada. <laughs> and there was a man, and this man, I was praying with him. I did not know him. And as I was praying with him, I, uh, I connected with his emotions. I connected in his spirit. Ha, ha. And so as I connected with him, uh, he, he was crying, and I started to cry with him. And he was speaking in, in the Holy Ghost. He was speaking in tongues, and I told him, don't stop. You continue to flow. And I started to feel his eyes, and I started to feel his pain in his burning. And I asked him, what's wrong with your eyes? And he shared with me, well, I have glaucoma. And I said, praise God, because God is revealing to me your symptoms, and he's going to heal your eyes right now. And so I asked him if I could pray for him. I asked him if I could lay hands on him. And, and I laid hands and declared healing over his eyes. And the Lord, hasha, hasha, the Lord healed them. And I'm going to tell you, that's not the only time. I have two other testimonies. I'm going to keep it real short. This other man, I prayed for him. And and his wife his wife said we need to pray for my husband I prayed for that man and the Lord healed him that man came running to me about three weeks later he says the Lord healed me God healed me I'm at work I'm trying to act like I don't know what's going on <laughs> like I don't know what's going on and I said well praise God he's like yeah you prayed for me and I'm trying to be like on the down low and he's like God healed me I said praise him so the Lord is healing, and he still heals. And this other time was this lady, and I was passing by her, and I started feeling her eyes. And so I, I didn't know how to approach her, and I said, hey, um, you know, my eye hurts. And she's like, yeah, mine too. And I really, so I told her, yeah, it's this all right. And she's like, yeah, and it feels like this. So she had like rotting, like a rotting eye, and her eye. Within 10 seconds, I felt to go away. Within half an hour, she testified that she was here. And so as, as John was sharing with the other brother um, uh, uh, to declare healing, um, I want to come into agreement and also declare healing over your life because the anointing of God said, as the brother shared, that we are one and, and, and oneness and we're two or three agree, right, then it shall be established. And we just want to, uh, I'm going to stop so the brother can de declare the, the healing. And, and I just want to come into agreement and we all agree and believe that it shall be established and that it shall come forward at this moment right now in the name of Yeshua, That's right. Jesus the Christ. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to leave, leave it alone because... <laughs> You can just be in agreement. Buddy, uh, just begin to speak 
you know, out of your spirit, uh, what, what spirit is revealing to you regarding rosemary or, or anything. And some of you might want to just open up your, your videos just in case uh, God gives Buddy something, you know, because Buddy does see stuff, you know. <laughs> and so, uh, so go ahead, Buddy. You, you're, you're there. And, and Fabian is agreeing and we're all agreeing. Well, I want to agree. I want to agree with everybody. And, and this, this walk that we're on is, is difficult at times. It's fun at times. But really, honestly, it's how we think is what's happening to make it be our best day or our worst day. Mm -hmm. And there, once you reach a certain point of, uh, of conscious awareness, the, the karmic wheel that you were speaking of yeah. is eclipsed. But you've got to realize that the collective consciousness is like a tidal wave. Yeah. And your own consciousness is that powerful too. So it literally, if you had been living a life of unconsciousness for 20 years, there is a wave that you have to get out in front of, like surfing. You got to get out in front of it and then it, it won't collapse on top of you, but it'll collapse right behind you and just give you that burst of energy of, mm. of knowing that you're okay. And when you realize that you are that blessed, that things are moving heaven and earth, to have it where you will be blessed, as long as you say, I am blessed and have much favor, it will be that way. And that's as simple as I can actually do that part for you. Thank you. Thank you. And we just agree that you are blessed. We all are blessed and we have favor. And because we are blessed and because we are one, whether it is glaucoma, whether it is high blood pressure, whether it is diabetes, cancer, liver, lung, heart, kidney, or whatever part or organ or name that you want to name it, in this space here, we just release the blessings of healing and wholeness and soundness within our body, and we command it to manifest in your body. Some of you might have an experience tonight as you're sleeping where you uh, go into other dimensions and stuff and encounter uh, the angelic. You know, what we call uh, angels... <sighs> Uh, what were called angels in the Bible are called aliens today. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it, it's, just, it's just words. And uh, God, Yahweh has so many ways to, to manifest healings and what we need in this reality. And so allow yourself as you sleep to just to ascend. Allow the real you to go out of your body, astral project, it's not a bad word. <laughs> you know? Religion made it a bad word, but it's not a bad word. Astral project, move into other realms and experience all that you need and bring back into this three-dimensional body everything you need. Ascend and go, if you need resources, bring back resources so that it can manifest in your world, three-dimensional world. If you need peace, Bring it back so when you wake up, you're filled with the peace and love and joy. And this is my last thing I'm going to say. Many years ago, I, I had a vision, and I saw that the time would come that we would have dreams, and that you, as you travel in your dream, that you would bring back into this three-dimensional world what you experience in that dream state. You will literally bring the physicality of it, whatever it is, literally, we would be able to go into that state and bring it into this world. And that's very, very powerful. And you can do that, you know, whether it's with healing, whether it's resources, whether it's soundness of mind or whatever. You can even do it for other people. Mm -hmm. More powerful than what we realize. Mm -hmm. And so I want to just uh, thank you, buddy. Thank you for your time. And thank you. We love you. And uh, thank you for all that you contribute to this uh, paradigm shift and uh, what's happening on the planet. And uh, we just appreciate you. And uh, can you type your, uh, let, let me do it for you. Zarias, can you type in Buddy Huggins YouTube? Uh, that's B-U-D-D-Y-H-U-G-G-I-N-S. Into the uh, thing there, I believe it's probably there. 
and uh, so that you guys can go to there and watch him. He's posting practically every day something, and he's sharing his journey, and it's very inspirational. It's very encouraging, and uh, we bless you all, and we thank you that testimonies will come as a result of this. One last thing. Uh, next week, I believe that we're going to begin to deal with the sectors of heaven, and uh, I have a Magi friend. He's on tonight, and uh, he's going to be sharing. Uh, maybe he just gone off. Uh, he was on. And uh, yeah, he's in a different time zone. He's going to be on next week. And uh, they're still Magi's. I'm one of them. <laughs> and so uh, I have a Magi friend, and uh, he's going to be sharing some really uh, powerful things. And so we want to encourage you to, uh, to try to be on. And we just appreciate and we love you all in with the love of God. So be blessed. Okay. Amen. Praise God. Ah, praise God. <laughs>